Welcome to G42 On Air. As AI and advanced technology scale at lightning speed, this podcast series brings us face to face with the change makers shaping our future. Take your front row seat with me, Amandeep, as we ask how these powerful new technologies are created, how they're transforming our world, and what's coming next. In today's episode, we're exploring the role of AI in modern urbanization and smart cities. And joining me here in the studio to help understand all this technology is Martin Yates, Government Technology Advisor of Presight. Martin, I introduce you with your Presight hat on, but let's just go a little bit further back because, of course, smart cities in you, you go further back. Yeah, thanks for that. And thanks for the introduction to talk about smart cities. Yes, so going a little bit further back, I was... Um, the CTO of Dell Technologies, looking after smart cities. And we were helping governments and cities around the world do deployments uh, to make their infrastructure smarter, better, and make their uh, cities much more livable. So yes, absolutely. Um, and, and it's absolutely great now that I, I've moved into the G42 group, previously Core uh, 42, and now here in Presight, leading the smart city. So lots of great things to share. So Martin, you really are the right person to have here in our hot seat when we talk about urban planning and some of the challenges that need to be addressed. Yeah, absolutely. And so a long time ago, someone said to me, you know, is smart cities a a necessity or a luxury? And um, I think time has now shown that the stress on cities worldwide means that it has become a necessity. I mean, if you think about some examples like 70% of all the world's population will be moving into cities. And if you're a city leader or a mayor, you know, you have a big headache because how do you deal with all that strain on your system? Um, You you can look in any number of cities in the world and see how much traffic is on the road and the loss of productivity through hours and hours of of sitting through traffic and naturally comes with that. How do I manage pollutions that are created from this? Um, How do I uh, keep my citizens more happy? How do I How do I do job creations in a city? It has to be a wonderful city because if it's not a wonderful city, people won't come and live there and they won't, uh, jobs won't be created there. So any number of, uh, you know, situations uh, cause and force city leadership to really invest heavily in, in smart cities. And from your global experience, are these quite universal issues? Yeah, absolutely. They're always, um, I would say there's always a trend that, that, that I'm seeing is one is, do I understand what's happening in my city? You know, some uh, what's happening now, and can I be a bit more smarter and predictive so that I don't always have to wait for the problem to occur? I can actually anticipate ahead, and you know, technology definitely has to sort of help that. And so you say technology has to help that. Let's break that down. What do we mean by that? That's a good question. There's a lot to break down um, in a in a smart cities. I mean, I, I think probably the most important thing that, that I've learned is that data is the core to being able to make smarter, better decisions. Data in real time, this is what's happening now, and both data to be much more predictive. And so all the technology we need to build smarter cities is available today. We have the cloud computing, we have sovereign cloud computing, we have artificial intelligence engines, we have um, internet of things, IoT, uh, and that's growing, you know, from, from millions to billions of sensors, which is collecting information all across the city. So the ability now to bring all those pieces together, you know, it's essentially that is the breakdown of like, if I can't bring all these pieces together, I can't make proper decisions. And, you know, recently you've seen with AI, um, you know, AI is brilliant, but if you don't give it good data, it gets hallucinations, you get all sorts of spurious sort of answers and you don't get better decision making and planning for the city. So what are some of the solutions to mitigate against that? There are numerous solutions. Um, Like for me, primarily, it is around what is the methodology of collecting data. So if you think about traffic light signals, if you think about car parks, you think about buildings that need to be smarter, if you think about smart meters and smart gas and lighting and management of streets and services, you know, the solution, there's hundreds of solutions that need to address that. Um, but ultimately, if you cannot bring that into a solutions framework, into a data sharing framework, uh, you never really get a smart city. You get a siloed city, but you don't really get a, a, a smart city. And so tell me about where Presight comes into this equation. Presight is 
uh, having all of the solutions necessary, uh, both ourselves that we've engineered ourselves here in the UAE and with our global partner network as well. So, and as I mentioned earlier, there can be hundreds of different use cases that need to be addressed. What we believe in Greesight is most of all is consolidation of that data and then applying our own artificial intelligence to that to make sense of what we're seeing. And so not only looking at past data, what happened in the past in a city or within a government situation, but what's happening right now, I can read that using AI real time so I don't have to wait for it to be trained. I can actually start acting on results. AI is jumping in there and saying, I see this happening and this is what I'm recommending that you should do. So that's so much smarter, so much more cost efficient and the benefits are tremendous to, to be able to have that uh, approach and methodology to running City Smart. So consolidation of data, data analytics, and that kind of real-time information sharing. Give us some real-world examples of where we can see this happening. Well, yeah, and, and there's, there are so many. Uh, so one of the, I think one of the most important, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, was the traffic congestions. And, you know, wherever you go in the world, there's lots of queues, right? And... Um, you know, to be able to use uh, technology to see how, is, how are the, the traffic queues forming? What do we understand about why things get congested? Is it that um, the, the signals, and, and I'm sure you've shared the experiences where you're, you're sat at a red light and there's nothing on the other side and you go, well, if you just let me go. So you need to go from what I call this kind of egg timer approach to traffic light system and the signaling and traffic management to more reactive and to more proactive signaling. So looking at how the, the queues and junctions build up traffic and then actively changing the signaling uh, reactively to uh, allow traffic to flow more smoothly. But that has to be connected from junction to junction to junction. Otherwise, you'll end up with a bottleneck somewhere else. So uh, traffic management is probably one of the big ones for us that we see. People want to certainly solve that and, and AI certainly jumps in there. But, but AI has so many other uh, areas as well. So for example, we can pick up on the fact that um, many citizens might be complaining about a certain government service. So we can pick that up through chat GPT sessions where talk to your city mayor, you know, so we can build intelligence to talk to your city. And this is what we have on display. Yeah, Presi, ask my, ask my city a question. Uh, and that's both for citizens and administrators of the city. And you're going to see so much more of that going forward in to be able, the city becomes a living ecosystem that you can interact with through AI to get better results. Ultimately, you end up with a much more livable city where people are more happy. And that's the goal, much more livable cities where people are happy. Now, you mentioned going forward, you're going to see more AI driven solutions. Let's explore. What do you mean by that? Yeah. So picking up on the traffic, but, you know, AI driven solutions are, occur everywhere. So... First of all, I mentioned a little bit earlier about how sensors pick up information. You know, it can be air quality sensors, it can be signaling, car parks, uh, traffic flows, any number of different areas. So bringing all those pieces together, making sense of that um, and delivering an outcome that those citizens are looking for is, is really paramount to that. And is this the right place to bring up digital twin city technology? Yeah, thanks that you've got that. That's exactly, a, that's a good question. So. You know, we talk about smart cities and they're very sensor based and they're very command based. So you can see you have the, the classic sort of um, view like a, a 2D map. And sometimes it can be a 3D map to, to understand to get that situational awareness of what's really happening. But digital twins goes to the next level. So like from a map we, we've seen through our, for our various different map applications, you can see a picture of a building. But now imagine saying, how much is that building using you know, how much electricity is being used? How much water is being used? What is the emissions, the carbon footprint of that, of that building? And so through different sensors, so essentially what you're doing is you're, you're lighting up the information that comes out of infrastructures, right? And this is absolutely essential. So when you go beyond a map and you build a, a building into a twin, it's a replica of the analog world. And it, so it can be replicas of vehicles, replicas of buildings, replicas of highways, replicas of traffic, replicas of waste management and essentially a replica of the whole city a replica of the whole city so what can you do with that so when you've collected that data you know you're logging that data so i can see what's happened in the past i can see the trends there so i've got real information from real buildings to real structure but what's the coolest part is let's say so we, we talked a little bit earlier about the strain on infrastructure people coming into the city so if i dial up now and i say okay in this city now 
I can predict that 100,000 people will move to here. I can simply turn a dial and say, when I add 100,000 people to this city, what does that mean um, in terms of infrastructure strength? Do I need to provide more water? Do I need to provide more schools? Uh, do I need to provide you know, uh, better supplies of electricity? Any number of different factors. When you, when you change the human dynamics, we need to end. So we can test that out. Now, what cities done in the past is they tend to say, well, I think we need to build one of those, or I think we need to expand this. But when they finally do it, it doesn't deliver the results. So imagine at almost zero dollars, you could actually try stuff out, test and prototype without building it for real and, and simulate that whole environment and then when it works perfectly using artificial intelligence, you can see that, you say, then I'll go out and build that building with confidence. And that's essentially a digital twin to be able to build, uh, you know, from analog world into the digital world, build and test and simulate with confidence. And um, you need to do that because you need to be cost efficient. The money doesn't grow on trees. And as a city leaders, we all know that. So Digital Twin is the answer pretty much to everything. And you will see Digital Twin of pretty much everything in the future. And that doesn't just apply to cities. That applies to factories. That applies to uh, whole environments. It could apply to forests. It could apply to any area you can imagine. Anything that lives in the analog world can turn into a Digital Twin. And that's a very compelling argument you can make there that with zero investment, you can experiment digitally and actually on a micro level and a macro level as well. When it comes to digital twin technology, where could we um, see in real time it's being used the most in the world? Yeah, so digital twin technologies have been quite used already heavily in manufacturing, but now we've seen that evolution and move towards um, digital twin cities. So some prime examples, my, my country is actually Singapore, and um, we're one of the first countries to implement uh, a digital twin Singapore. So we have a digital Singapore. And again, all the advantages that we talked about allowed us to simulate. So Singapore is probably be one of the world uh, ranked leaders in terms of using digital twins. I think everyone is somehow now figuring out that digital twins important. And here we are right here in the UAE, and um, I'm coming from Abu Dhabi, and already you can see you know, tremendous strides and advancements in digital twin for Abu Dhabi. And, it, and it's absolutely amazing. You have the whole city, you can render, you can go inside the buildings, you can look at consumptions, you can look at environmental factors, road traffic flows, um, and people are gonna add more and more information to that so it becomes more rich, and therefore it means you get better planning and better outcomes. Martin, you mentioned environmental factors there. Sustainability has got to be central to what you're doing. A absolutely, so we put, you know, at the forefront you know, when we look at the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, um, you know, SG11 is one of those ones which talk about making cities smarter um, and more uh, energy efficient. And it also talks about climate change, you know, so the effect. So when we build smarter, when we use less energy in buildings, the, the carbon footprint goes down. When we use water more efficiently, when we use heating and cooling more efficiently, when we're proactive in fixing things early, um, this all has a massive effect on the carbon footprint and the environment as we go forward, including smarter planning and environment as well. Because if you build a building right in the first place, if you do it in the right way, right directions, the right wind directions and all the weather parameters, um, you're going to save a fortune potentially on cooling. And if you're in a colder country, you're going to maybe save a fortune on heating. You know, so those are all the parameters that you can test and try out. So huge, huge effect um, on the environment, um, you know, for the greater good using digital twins. Martin, that sounds really fascinating. But what are the challenges in building this? Uh, that's a great question because certainly if you think about the diversification, the different data types we need to make sense of it, to build a twin model, um, is da quite daunting for many people in the beginning. And so, you know, what we've done in, in Presight is we built what we call our IntelliCity platform which allows information to be collected from buildings, you know, from the IoT sensors, uh, from the environment sensors, from the streets and things like this. Um, so when you can collect that information much easier, you're already on the way to building that, that digital twin. So first you essentially were gonna get to the smart city, the command and control level, but very quickly to get those, those business and government results that you're looking for, you wanna build your twin on top of that. So, so data is everything, both from the past, both from now and, and being able to predict into the future. And so coming back to our intelligence platform again, we, we said, well, you know, 
when we can bring that, we can route it to the right people. But the, the real key challenge as well in chat is really like, how do, how do people agree to share? Because, you know, a city is not one thing. It's a, it could have 50 different government agencies that are involved in running the whole of a city, right? So that then comes back to how do I encourage everyone to share information that's needed to run a city much more holistically? Yeah, and build those digital twins. That so that's really, it's a people to... challenge as well. Absolutely. It's a policy challenge. Um, technology wise, we've put together an amazing array of uh, software that allows that to happen. But it'll always be a little bit around uh, the stakeholder management. And I just wanted to interrupt there because I think it allows me to ask you the question, the data collecting and data sharing, of course, it begs the question of data privacy and data protection. And how can that be built into the model? Yeah, so I think to be clear when we talk about data privacy, so when we're talking about IoT sensors and things like this in the street, um, this is not so much around necessarily the, the privacy, side, but it is around security, right? So if we have, if we're basing, you know, sort of actions on information coming in from sensors, if we get the wrong information, like uh, uh, um, this is a hypothetical scenario, but imagine some cyber hack could set off all the fire alarms in a building or shut down all the things that you see in those kind of movies, you know, where someone comes in with a headset and some guru and shuts down a city or an elevator or something like this. So, of course, you know, security always comes first. And, um, you know, there are a number of different techniques about how we secure devices, how we secure what we call data at rest and data in transit as it's being moved. And um, I, I probably don't have time to go into all the different techniques, you know, but with such as zero trust, um, technologies, but we look at all of that aspect of what does it take to secure important data that makes that drives decisions from end to end. And does that also address the data privacy in the respect of the different government departments being happy to share their information between themselves for this type of yeah. planning? And and I think that's a great question. In in you know, like the twenty years that I've been doing this, it always has come down a little bit to what is okay to share, what is not okay to share. And certain policies and regulations compliances doesn't allow that. But remember, the goal is that the, the, the smarter city comes from more sharing. So there are a number of different techniques that we use, uh, such as um, federated learning, uh, where we don't necessarily need to take all the information. We can just take the results of certain queries. So a number of different ways that people allow and preserve their, their data security, whilst also delivering results that the city needs to make smarter decisions for a more livable city. Now, Martin, with your international experience and also your insight to the UAE here, what makes this particular environment really exciting for pre-site to exist and for this technology to go to the next level? I, I think there's a lot of things to be excited about here because in the last few years, we, I mean, you know, we talk about AI like it's new, but it's been around decades, right? But what I think is now is it's really surfaced up and everyone can get the feel of it using through, you know, using generative AI, for example. So that really um, has been the, the, the big change, right? In the way that the days put together, the way we can use generative AI, the way we can interact. This is really the, the big change that we're seeing. And, you know, we expect cities to evolve now uh, very, very fast. And, and, you know, something I didn't speak to, I talk about IoT, Internet of Things. But um, you've, seen the, you've seen what's been happening in the use. Robots are coming. And my final question to you, Martin, would you class yourself as an AI optimist or an AI pessimist? Oh, wow. I don't think I've been asked that one before. Um, I think I'm an AI optimist, right? I mean, you know, like what, back in the 90s, the, what would the internet do to everyone, right? So it also has pluses and minuses from the different people's perspectives. On the whole, definitely I'm an optimist for, for AI. If it's nothing more than being at Ask GPT some quick, smart questions so that I don't have to look it all up all the time. So yeah, absolutely, I think AI is gonna bring tremendous uh, advances for us, for, for individuals, for families, for communities, for cities and, and for the country and, and the planet itself. Martin, there's so much more we could explore with you, but for now, with your optimism and all your insights, I thank you. And I say, come back please to G42 on air and give us more insights in the future. Thank you so much for your time, Martin. Thank you, so thank looking you. forward to it.
And thank you for joining us. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and see you for the next episode of G42 On Air.